Bump, set, spike. The Buff Volleyball team just had their first match of the year. Notorious band director and crowd favorite Miss Cutler has been officially replaced by Mr. Nagley. Masks are now mandated in all USD 259 schools, and all this and more coming to this episode of BTV. Hey Buffs, I'm Neo Johnson. Welcome back to the second episode of BTV. Have you been noticing more vandalism around the school this year? A new TikTok trend is influencing students to steal items from the school, and as a result, a majority of the bathrooms have been closed. We will have more information about the consequences and students' reactions to the behavior next episode. Another new rule has gone into effect here at Southeast. Masks are now mandated for all USD 259 schools. But this raises the question of how many kids will obey this order. Reporter Justin Van takes a look at how well students are complying with this mandate. Masks are now required at Southeast and at all other buildings in the district. Many question how effective the mandate will be and how well students are complying with it. Some students don't think it should be required. I mean, if you have the vaccine, I don't really think you should have it on. But if you want to have it on, you can, but like, I don't think they should mandate it. Teachers and administration say that most students have been wearing their masks appropriately, but there are some that are still having trouble doing so. Well, students were not following the mask mandate earlier today, so I put it up on the board for them. I think it's very important that they follow it, but it's hard to do because it's very hard to breathe with a mask. Um, our, I think our biggest struggle has been on the buses more than in the building. We've actually been really proud with how well students have responded to wearing their masks, um, other than occasional reminders to make sure noses are covered. Um, we haven't had too many students that are resisting wearing them. Uh, a lot of students are complying, which would lead us to believe a lot of students understand the severity and the reality of what's going on, and, and so they're doing a pretty good job so far. Some classes are harder to wear masks than others, such as PE. Uh, what I believe right now with students in PE is that uh, if we are outside, that it is okay because we're out in an open area. Uh, if we are indoor, what I've told my students is that uh, once they start exercising, if they feel like they need to take some air, you know, I tell them pull down their mask, get what you need, and then we get our mask back up again. You know, and you can just you can do it as many times as you need to. Um, you know, I try to do activities, especially when we're indoor. It doesn't require a lot more cardio so that we don't have to really worry about it being off the entire time. The mass mandates overall has been quite successful for Southeast, and we hope soon things can get better and go back to being without them. For BTV, I'm Justin Van. Thanks, Justin. My co-anchor Miles Banks interviewed seniors about how COVID impacted their high school experience. Here is this installment of Have You Heard? Welcome back to another segment of Have You Heard? Today's question, how do seniors feel about losing over half of their high school career? I'm doing better in school than I was when I was at home because I really wasn't paying attention in school like I was supposed to. I feel like it makes me feel really sad because I miss on a lot of things during the year. Um, I'm a dancer, so I miss a lot of games and a lot of fun just by going out with my friends and all that at school. I feel like I've kind of missed out on some things and like the school year has gone by faster but slower at the same time because the online process was just so long. I'm disappointed because I wasn't really getting work sent when I was on quarantine and I lowered my grades and now I got to do extra, extra stuff, beep, extra stuff to get my grades up. It's kind of sad how like so far a majority of our high school time has been online or just not in school. So getting the full high school experience has been kind of weird, but so far with the time that we did have together, it was really fun. and. I just hope that we can just finish off the last year as senior year as something big and something memorable to make up for the past two years where seniors weren't able to do things like that. So I just hope we can have more like events or participation and things like that. I think I'll look back on this and like take it as like a learning experience to like not push things like forward to side and don't take things for granted really. 
that's all for today's episode. If you have any questions or anything you'd like us to ask, stop one of us in the hall or ask your seminar teacher. Tune in next time to have you heard. Back to you, Neo. Thanks, Miles. Staying on the topic of coronavirus and its impacts, some students are having difficulty adjusting to being back in person as they come back from the year and a half away from school. Reporter Chris Doe has more. With most students not being in person for so long, many teachers are noticing that student participation has changed since we were last in person. Much more participation in class than when we were doing full remote. Absolutely. So I would say almost everybody is participating in most of my classes. So that's a huge difference from last year. I would say I see different students participating more. Uh, I think that some students feel more comfortable on the computer but not as comfortable in the classroom speaking up, which is a downside. However, I think in general, everyone's much happier to be back in person. But how are students adjusting getting back to normal with speaking and interacting with others? I've been teaching for many, many years. So this year I've seen that there wasn't as much excitement or um, jumping into the activities as before. Once they got going, then they were fine, but they were a little reluctant. So I think there was a little bit of reluctance with students getting started. However, some people might have been more social getting used to being back in person. Notice that there's the singular students that answer a lot of questions still, but they're starting, the, the shyer students are starting to come around now a little bit more. So I think it's just adjusting to having the opportunities um, and I think they'll come around here soon. Yeah. For BTV, I'm Christopher Doe. For those of you who don't know, there will be a new grading system taking effect for all freshman classes next year. However, some teachers are testing out the system right now. Reporter Christy Dung talks to teachers and students to see how it's been going. Some teachers are starting SRG this school year. The switch has affected their way of teaching and grading. Uh you know, before it was everything was based more on a point system where this is more based on the standards of what we're actually teaching. So there's a lot more, especially with my classes, a lot of emphasis on skill level and where they stand. So, you know, I really have to assess where the kids are at with their skill levels with the games that we're playing. Um, yeah, the focus more is on mastery and less on A, B, C, D, those kind of grades. So we're really more focusing on what kids know instead of can they do extra credit to make up for things. So it's really based on what kids Teachers have made adjustments to fit the new system. I've had to kind of go back and change some of my rubrics and kind of make sure they are focused on specific targets and standards instead of just specific skills. This has caused tense feelings for everyone, including students. I still had to learn new things from how they do it or how they might you know, grade and stuff from SRG and stuff, but still all understand like the basics of it and how it will work. I enjoyed learning about it and I'm kind of nervous putting it into practice, but I think the more we use it and get more comfortable with it, I think it will work well for everyone. During the 2022 through 23 school year, entry level courses will start implementing SRG. There will be family sessions to learn more about SRG throughout September and October. For more info, go to usd259.org slash grading. For BTV, I'm Christy Dong. Last year, we said goodbye to longtime band director, Miss Cutler. The new director would like to put his stamp on the program. Reporter Noah Beerig introduces us to Mr. Nagley. Last year marked Mrs. Cutler's final year here at Southeast. She brought our band many awards and honors like going to Hawaii to perform for the Pearl Harbor Memorial in 2018. While it is sad to see her go, we're lucky enough to have Joel Nagley to take over. Uh, I, I miss the high school kids a lot. So I was teaching beginning band, 7th and 8th grade band, 6th grade band, um, some guitar classes, and uh, it's good to be back to high school. Nearly everyone at Southeast has seen our classic field show made by Mrs. Cutler. Nagley has since changed it into something he hopes will prove a little more challenging. Um, marching band um, has kind of taken a turn um, in a lot of schools to be more competitive and to be honest, pet band tunes like that are not what you're going to get out of more of a competitive um, type program. So um, that's why I felt it needed to be changed up. I felt like the students need to learn something new, um, have some more challenges, and they've met those challenges. The band students are excited to learn this year's new field show. It's really nice, but I must say that memorizing is a 
bit of a process to do since eh, music is kind of difficult. I'm actually so far really liking this new field show. It's kind of easy right now for me. And I think it will be really good when we finish putting it together. Nagley is looking to increase the band's social media presence. We actually um, are changing that Facebook. We've already changed it. We've just got to wait for it. It's an invite only system. Um, so we need to get that really up and running. Um, it's there, it's set up. We just haven't had the time to really get kids um, into it. Um, that old one I think is going to stay there, um, but we're going to do a new one for our current members and parents. For BTV, I'm Noah Bierig. The annual Buff Awards took place on September 17th. Students who have held a 4.0 GPA for four consecutive years got awarded a gold buffalo pin, a bronze pin for three years, and a silver pin for two. The thespians gathered for their annual picnic on September 18th. There was cotton candy and a generally good time. They even tried to learn a dance. As we told you last episode, many students don't have much to do during the new Wednesday schedule. However, science teacher Mr. Schwier donated some board games to the library to help fix that problem. I just like to use uh, my business and some of the stuff I'm doing outside of school to kind of benefit students at Southeast High School, so I felt like it was a great opportunity to give back to students who want to get more involved with the gaming community and give them something they can do on lunch that's productive or after school or whenever they're here playing games. And so when she sent out an email saying she was looking for more games, I thought it was a great opportunity to kind of give back to the school. ESOL Para Kim Ward also donated about 10 games. Donations included Skip Bow, Checkers, Chess, Magic the Gathering Cards, Clue, and Sorry. And now here is Evan Tong with sports. Welcome to sports, and I'm your anchor, Evan Tong. Let's get down to the sports ball. Rumbling his way through the defense, Joel Underwood is a dangerous man. Unfortunately, these past two weeks have not been as hot, especially with an ankle injury to starting quarterback Tavion Smith that has weakened our air attack. But he'll be back for the game against Liberal. Good luck out there, Buffs. Rough couple weeks on the pitch as the boys lose to Andover Central, 0-3, and Capen 1-5. As for Tri-County, they went 2-9 against May South and 5-7 in a close game against Northwest. Samuel Gibson is looking to be a great goalie. Other standout players include Christina White, Jamel Scale Adams, and Ricky Gomez. Our Lady Buffs mop the floor with a merciless sweep against North and South. Key contributors being Ava Wadley, Penny Johnson, Maricel Gallegos, and Olivia Greenman. Fantastic job. Racketeering like Al Capone, our protection money is going towards Southeast demolishing Heights 9-0 and East 8-2. Standout players these games were Joanna Wynn, Sam Meisters, and freshman Joni Deng did not drop a game against Heights. Around the world, around the world, runners like Evan Boudreau go. Jake Beecham took first place at the meet. Even seeing personal bests out there, although this isn't track, this is a great leap forward. Working on that perfect swing, we've got Angelica Bui placing 21st at our home meet. At Tex Consolver Golf Course, Angelica tied for 19th, while in JV, Leanna Tran placed 13th. And for our installment of Buff Least this episode, we've got Ricky Clay introducing a member of the cross country team. Hi, welcome back to Buff Elites with your host, Ricky. Today, I have my special guest, Gwendolyn Crumbs, or as we call her here, Gwendolyn. I uh, hear you're a uh, special part of this year's uh, cross-country team. Uh, what are your thoughts so far of the season and uh, every athlete coming out today? Um, well, the coach is all right, you know. Um, but, like, our teammates have been pr doing pretty good. Um, we've all PR'd. We've all been getting medals. It's been a great season so far. All right, great. Sounds good. Showing success so far. Now, I'm going to ask you a couple questions here. Firstly being, what are the, some of the most grueling, harding, hard parts of cross country? I know that you guys run for hours and hours on end sometimes, you know, just preparing and working yourself, making sure you're uh, keeping in shape. What, what are some of the hardest parts for you specifically? Having to run like a 10K in 100 degree weather, it can be pretty tough sometimes. Yeah, I, I understand myself. I'm a, a track athlete. I know how hot it can get out there at those meets. Um, what do you think the biggest parts of the team's success is going to be this year? Is it specific athletes or is it just kind of the team effort as a whole? Um, definitely Jake, our captain, like cheering us on and the whole team just like encouraging each other and getting us to go. We do have some athletes who will start walking and, you know, we'll encourage them to go. So just like keeping up that. 
I'm pretty sure that our cross country team can pull through. Our Southeast sports is is pretty strong on its own. But here you have it again, Buffalo Buffaloes with me, Ricky. My uh, guest today was Gwendolyn, and we'll see you next time. Thanks, Evan. That does it for this episode of BTV. We leave you now with some sights and sounds from the recent Baby Buffs Cheer Clinic. They will be performing during our next home game against Capen. See you next time. Yeah.